Oh, what's up everybody? I'm Matt Gary, and in this ninth episode of the Separation of Concerns in Apex Common Library tutorial series, we're going to go over the template method pattern. All right, guys, so welcome to this ninth episode of the Separation of Concerns in Apex Common tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over the template method design pattern and, uh, you know, what it is, why it's useful, how it fits into separation of concerns, and how it fits into the uh, Apex Common Library. So, uh, the first thing that we'll go over is what it is. Uh, the template method design pattern is a behavioral design pattern. Um, if you want more information on what a behavioral design pattern is, I'm not going to go over it in this video, but in the um, wiki that I have, it goes over it. You know, there's an article that I linked that goes over what behavioral design patterns are, so you can get a little more information on that there. But basically what the template method pattern is, is um, a pattern that allows you to create a... I like to describe it as a genericized skeleton class. So it allows you to define all of the generic code. Um, and it's a class that a subclass can extend and add functionality to to make it work in the way that that class needs it to work. That's a little confusing. Um, and it's hard to explain what that is without showing you an example of it. And I think the most popular example that the vast majority of people are going to at least have some level of, you know, uh, of an introductory to is a trigger handler. If you've ever used a trigger handler framework, chances are it uses the template method pattern. And let me show you what I mean by that. This is one of the more popular trigger handler frameworks, the, the, the one by uh, Kevin O'Hara and it defines as you can see in this class that another class can extend it defines a lot of functionality right like there's tons and tons and tons of stuff in here uh, it's a I guess there's not tons and tons of stuff but you know it's a couple hundred line class that does a lot of things for you that being said it's pretty much gonna do nothing for you if you don't override and implement some of these uh, uh, empty methods here, right? So it provides to you a template. This, this trigger handler class provides to you a template, right? That gives you lots of uh, functionality just pre-built into it. But it expects you in the trigger handlers that you make to override these empty methods and do something with it. So for instance, if I took this popular trigger handler and I made a case trigger handler, so I've got this case trigger handler that extends that trigger handler class and it extends it because it's a virtual class that we have the ability to extend. And then we override our before insert method, which you can see down here is one of our uh, methods that you know we need to implement to be able to have context specific, you know, uh, functionality or really object specific functionality in, in this uh, situation. So as you can see, it's very useful. And the reason why this pattern is useful is because say for instance, I didn't have a trigger handler framework, but I wanted to do all these kind of things right i wanted i wanted to have this functionality to be able to stop my trigger if you didn't know this this trigger framework gives you the ability to stop your uh triggers restart your triggers um you know determine how many times your trigger is called all a bunch of other things right um but if i wanted to give that functionality to every trigger handler class and i didn't have this you know trigger handler that follows that template method pattern well, I'd just end up implementing it in every single class, right? Every single trigger handler class I made, I'd implement all of this functionality potentially, which, I mean, that's not great, right? It's 
it's not great at all. <laughs> so um, instead, right, I, I've got this ability now to inherit all of this awesome functionality from this trigger handler framework on any trigger handler I want, and I don't have to rewrite all this code every single time. Instead, I've just got to have it extend the trigger handler class, and uh, it just will inherently gain all of that, you know, all, all of that uh, code that can be abstract, right, and does not have to be uh, object or context specific. So, right, you can see that this this really has a lot of utility in that you don't have to repeat yourself as often in your code if you start leveraging this template method pattern in places where you can you know say have 75 80 maybe even 90 percent of your code be abstract and work in a variety of situations and um, maybe only 10 percent of it needs to have an object specific uh, or you know situation specific code uh, so anyway that's uh, basically what it is you've got a skeleton class this is in my this is what I refer to as the skeleton class the trigger handler and then um, you've got your basically empty methods in here that are expected to be overridden um, in your object specific or context specific class so that you actually get the the true benefit out of you know this template that you've built um, I think that there's a lot of other videos out there that explain this in terms of like Photoshop templates and artwork templates and stuff like that uh, but I really wanted to express this I guess in code terms that I think more developers might grasp uh, there's a lot of other videos out there that do explain this in other terms, so if this is still a little confusing, I'll link a couple of them that I like in uh, in the description below so that you can get some more information about it. Um, as far as, you know, how does this fit into the Apex Common Library, uh, that aspect is pretty simple. It is used heavily by the FFlib, I mean, the FFlib SI, object domain class utilizes the template method pattern in the same way that pretty much all trigger handlers do. Um, we're going to get into the S object domain class in a couple episodes, episode 11 I believe, but effectively what this is is it, it, it's more than this but it's it's like a trigger uh, handler. It's got a lot of the same functionality as a trigger handler. There's quite a bit more to it than that but um, at its core anyway that's what it is so it manages uh, or you know it leverages that uh, the template method pattern to allow you to do um, a lot of that trigger related stuff right so it's it's in my opinion at least a little important that you understand this pattern so that you're not like super confused why do you have to do it this way why was it designed this way all that kind of stuff that's kind of why I wanted to briefly go over that in this tutorial series but just so you know, that is where it's leveraged in this FFlib S object domain class. And we'll see that late in, in the next couple episodes. Um, as far as where does this fit into separation of concerns, it's not like it's directly tied to it, but it certainly helps with it. And the fact that, it, you know, in the, it, it allows you to separate your abstract code from your implementation specific code, right? So you, you follow things like the dry principle and the solid principles, which is you know, dry just stands for don't repeat yourself, you know. <laughs> and this allows you, this template method pattern allows you in a lot of situations to not repeat yourself, uh, which is great. You know, it saves you a lot of code. It saves you saves you from implementing the same thing over and over, potentially in different ways, uh, for no reason. So uh, it's beneficial there in that you can separate out your abstractions from your, from your context-specific code. And... Um, you know, still benefit from all that abstract code in your context-specific classes. So that's kind of where it um, fits into the whole separation of concerns conversation, I guess, to an extent. Um, but other than that, I think that's most of what we need to cover for this. Uh, I don't want to go into too much depth here. It's not 
ultra critical that you understand this in and out, but it is important that you understand how it kind of works or why this pattern exists and how it fits into things. So again, if you want more information, definitely check out the wiki that I've created for this tutorial series. It has a bit more information in there. Uh, and I'll link a couple of videos to uh, in the description of this video that I think are good examples of template method patterns, but might not be specific to Salesforce and, you know, I guess a development situation. So anyway, guys, that is it for this episode. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to go over what the domain layer is uh, in Salesforce and, you know, different ways you might go about implementing a domain layer if you wanted to. So, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around. I will see you in the next episode.